It was a murder that shocked the Green Bay community. A single mother was sexually assaulted, her throat cut, and left to die in a manure pit. 35 year old Margaret Anderson was killed during the Christmas holiday back in 1983. Four men were later convicted in the brutal crime. And author Mike Doplaze has written a true crime book about Anderson's murder. It's called Torture at the Back 40, The Gang Rape and Slaying of Margaret Anderson. And it is set to be released later this week. We have the book with us, too. Mike is also here to talk about it. Good morning. Good morning, Rachel. How much time have you invested in this? A good year and a half. It's been a, lo a lot of research going back into it. Um, We've heard your name before because this isn't your first book. You wrote a book about Jerry Parents. Right. That was called Bodyguard to the Packers, and that came out a year ago. And there was a chapter in that book that talked about this case because Jerry was one of the prime uh, police investigators on the case. Is that what led you to start thinking more about the Margaret Anderson case? Yeah, absolutely, because uh, my publisher, Tracy Ertle, uh, said, boy, I, I can't believe nobody's done a whole book on that case. Keep working on it, and, and we'll put it out. So that's what we did. What is it about this story that's worthy of a whole book? Um, at the time, which was 1983, it was uh, a very high-profile case in Green Bay, and it was special because it wasn't uh, a crime of passion or anything like that. It was just r seemingly random violence from uh, four motorcycle guys from two different clubs, and uh, they were in a bar called the Back 40. It was on Bodart Way in Green Bay, and Margaret was there that night, and things just got out of hand, and, and by the end of the night, Margaret was dead. Too much alcohol, too much drugs, leading to this eventual crime? That along with just a general um, philosophy of not seeing women in a good light uh, from that type of a subculture of our society. The details in the book are gruesome. There is a picture in there that I found shocking and, and being in, in the news business I see a lot of things but the, the crime scene or the, the vi it's video of or picture excuse me of her legs right. all cut up. And, and we, we thought that was important to put in just to, to illustrate the brutality of this crime because uh, for instance the the pathologist at the time Dr. Scarpel said out of all the uh, autopsies he had done this was the most brutal he had ever seen and that's what's really scared the community not only was this a, a murder but it was so much torture before the murder that it, it really made this case stand out. What was it like for you doing the research? Um, it, it was very interesting from a personal standpoint. Um, I have a newspaper background, so I'm certainly used to looking up facts. But what I really liked doing was getting the side stories that you may not have read in newspapers or didn't come out in the court reports, that type of thing. So I did over 40 personal interviews during the course of the research. I even went out to Montana where Margaret grew up and uh, visited with her fr friends and family out there and uh, really tried to paint a picture of, of Margaret as well. And, and Rachel, I think that's kind of a key component of what I did here is I really tried to provide a voice for Margaret too because at, at the time she really didn't get her story told. So chapter two of this book is just about who she was as a person. We actually at the time heard more about the four men because there were four separate trials ex uh, spanning over several years because right. they couldn't find one of the guys. Right. And talk a little bit about that. Um, they, they took eight months to find the primary suspect, a guy named Randy Whiting, who ended up getting convicted for the murder. And uh, th there was two other guys locally that they got right away as a result of that. But the final guy, Dennis Stumpner, had disappeared. And they couldn't find him. And they went on a brand new Fox show at the time called America's Most Wanted. And on Father's Day weekend, 1988, uh, they, they aired a, a segment they had, they had taped here in Green Bay using a lot of UW Green Bay drama students as actors. And three days after that aired, they had him. And One he, of the first guys to be captured because of that show. Correct, out in Golden, Colorado. Now, I think another thing that people will find surprising, if they don't remember this particular case from the 80s, they might remember it because some of these guys are out now. Right. Over the last couple of years, uh, two of the fellas have gotten out. Uh, the bar owner, Mark Lukensmeyer, is out. And uh, one of the other guys, name is uh, Mark Hinton, he is out. And the reason they're getting out is at the time they were given 50-year sentences, but the law at the time only required that they spend 22 years in prison. So enough time has passed now that these, the guys are getting out that were, that were uh, given sexual assault sentences. Randy Whiting, who got the murder rap, is parole eligible, but hopefully won't get out. It's a fascinating read. It's true crime. And Mike, you're going to be holding um, kind of a book signing? Right. We're having a book release party Friday evening at Titletown Brewing. Uh, the public is invited, 6.30 till uh, 9 at night, outside under the canopy. Hopefully it'll be a nice night. 
and um, they can come and, and meet me and get their copy of the book. We'll have that information if you missed it on fox11online.com. Click on Good Day Wisconsin. And also there will be another book released at the same time. We'll meet another author tomorrow on Good Day who's going to be part of that, another true crime from the Green Bay area. Mike, thank you so much. Thank you, Rich. We'll be right back. You're watching Good Day Wisconsin.